In this lesson, we'll talk about the different types of shadows that can be found inside of Cinema 4D. Okay, so we're going to continue working with this little alleyway scene here. So in this scene, I have a couple of lights set up. So I have, have just a simple white light and just a blue light back here in the alley. Now, whenever we create any type of a light inside of Cinema 4D, the lights by default do not cast any sort of shadows. So if I were to come back here to this uh, little chain link fence, I'll press the S key on my keyboard to zoom in on that. So here's our object, and really it's just a simple plane that has a transparency map applied to it to make it look like a, a chain link fence. So if I come in and take a quick render of this, what we should see is that we have no shadows whatsoever in this scene. So I'll just go, go ahead and quickly draw out a render region for this. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt-R, on my keyboard. Okay, and let's come in here, maybe dial up my quality settings by just pulling this little slider up. There we go. So we do have lights, but no shadows. So we have to enable shadows on every light source that we create inside of Cinema 4D. So let's select something like this blue alley light. Now we can enable shadows in a couple of different ways. We could go to this general tab, and in the shadow, we could pull down this little menu, and we have three different shadow types to choose from. Shadow maps, ray traced, and area. So we could choose one of our three shadow types from this general tab, or we could do the exact same thing by going to the shadow tab, and we can choose from either of our three shadow types from here as well. So if I'm in the shadow tab and I choose shadow maps, now if I go back to the general tab, you can see shadow maps have been set here as well. So if we go into the shadow tab, then we can actually start to adjust some of the attributes that are connected to each of these shadow types. So let's start at the top with our shadow maps. So when you think of something like a map, typically you think of something that is pixel-based, like a texture. And believe it or not, that's actually what is happening whenever we use a shadow map type shadow. What's happening is behind the scenes is Cinema 4D is calculating the areas of our image or the areas that of our scene that are not visible to the light that we are enabling shadows on. Now what is happening is once it calculates which areas are not visible, it's actually generating a pixel-based map and then overlaying that on our final image. So believe it or not, this is actually based in pixels. So the resolution of the map that we're using is defined from this menu here. Now right now it's only set to 250 by 250, so it's actually a really, really low resolution pixel map that we are getting. Now, in addition to that, we have what's called the sample radius. Now, the sample radius is more or less determining the amount of blur that's being applied to this map. So you can see with these soft shadows, we're getting this really, really soft effect, but that's because we're taking these pixels that are uh, based on this uh, shadow map and basically blurring these out. So if I take my sample radius down to something like 1, that's going to take these pixels and not apply quite so much blur to those. So now my shadow is a little bit sharper. If I take my sample radius up to 2, they get a little bit blurrier. Up to 3, the shadows blur out a little bit more, and so on and so forth. Now, what's happening is the sample radius and the shadow map are actually sort of connected together as far as your final rendered result and just how that looks. So to take a 250 by 250 map and blur that by 2 pixels, it's going to give you a lot of blur. But if I take something like a 1000 by 1000 map, so now my shadows are being generated in a much more high resolution map, if we take a thousand pixels and blur that by two, we're not going to get much of a result. It's not going to uh, really blur things out that much. So if you get a higher resolution, then typically you're going to have to bring your sample radius up quite a bit higher to get some similarly smooth results. But the good news is, if you really want some blurry results, you can get away with having your shadow map resolution set a little bit lower, and then rely on a little bit lower sample radius to blur it out accordingly. So typically the only reason that you would want to really take your shadow map resolution up really high is if you do want to get some sharper resolution shadows. So the benefit of using these shadow maps is the fact that they are very, very fast to ca calculate, almost instantaneous in my case. Um, the drawback, though, is that these shadow maps can become sort of memory-intensive. 
so you can see right now my memory usage, to write out a 1000 by 1000 pixel map and uh, hold that in memory for display in my rendering, it's right now taking up 48 megabytes of my RAM. So with a really, really complex scene with lots of lights all casting out these shadow maps, you can start to really, really uh, slow down your system and uh, start to create a, s a scene that is very, very resource intensive to render. But if you can manage it, then these shadow maps do render really, really fast. Now the second type that we have is a ray trace shadow. Now the ray trace shadow is a hard type shadow, so as you can see, it's very, very sharp and very crisp. The way that this is working is a little bit different than a shadow map, so it's not actually generating a pixel-based map that's being laid over our image. Instead, what we see here is a true ray trace calculation. So uh, Cinema 4D is actually sending out rays from this light, identifying which parts of the scene are being obscured by another object, and it's actually shading those areas darker. So the way that it works is a little bit different, but the end result looks very, very similar. You can see with the ray trace shadow, there's really almost no options to be seen here. Pretty much the only thing that we can do is set transparency or disable it. So with transparency disabled, you can see it's now ignoring the transparency map that I had applied to this object, and now it's just rendering it as just a simple solid plane, which is in fact what the surface is. Okay, so that is the ray trace shadow. It does have some uses, but unless you're going for some really, really sharp, hard shadows, this may not be the first choice for you. Now the last one I'm going to show you is the area shadow. Now this is probably my favorite type because it is the most physically realistic. The drawback though is that it's also the slowest to render. So if I enable an area shadow, what it's trying to do now is enable or simulate light that is coming from a larger, more diffuse light source. So in my case, my light source is so spread out and so diffuse that it's really not showing up at all in my shadows. So let's come back, and I'll just middle click here to switch to a different viewport. If I go to something like my front view, if I enable these area shadows, we can actually see, if you look very closely, this sort of an outline, this square shape. Now this is representing the uh, sort of area that my light and my shadows are trying to come from. So right now this is really, really big. Um, if we go into the Details tab, we can actually change the size of our area. We can also change its shape. So right now it's a simple rectangle, so it's going to just come from this sort of flat surface here. If I press Alt-R again to disable my render region. Come back here. If you look closely, you can sort of see it, although in my case that's still a little bit difficult to see the outline. But what I want to show you is the fact that we can go into this details, and here we can change the size of that area shape. So if I go to my front view, that might be a little bit easier to see. So let's take it from 200 centimeters down to something quite a bit smaller, like 10 centimeters. Now if I zoom in closer, you can see a much, much smaller size that this is going to be coming from, which should, as a result, give us a little bit sharper shadows because we're not trying to spread those out and get those quite as diffuse as what they were before. And now you can sort of see the result that we're getting here. Now it's still pretty blurry, so in my case I'll take this down even a little bit further, maybe to 2 centimeters by 2 centimeters. There we go. Now let's get in here a little bit tighter, just so you can see this. So these area shadows are actually the most physically realistic. So you can see how with these area shadows, these parts of the wall and the parts of the ground that are closest to the shadow casting object, you notice that we get really, really sharp, nicely defined shadows in those areas. But as we start to move further and further away from the shadow caster, our shadow starts to become more spread out and more diffuse and more soft. That's exactly the way that shadows behave in the real world. And this area shadow is the only type of shadow inside of Cinema 4D that actually simulates that type of behavior. But like I said, it is actually the slowest to render. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, how spread out and how diffuse your shadows become will depend on the size of your area, in my case, and it also depends on just how far away the light source is from your shadow casting object. So all these things 
uh, definitely play a part in the overall look of your shadows. So my recommendation would be if you can get away with just using the soft shadows and if time is a priority as far as your render times are concerned, then a lot of times you can get some really, really nice results with the shadow maps. But if you are more concerned with realism and you want to get things as accurate as possible, then definitely uh, think about using these area lights for your uh, shadowing needs. Okay, now one last thing I want to show you before we wrap up this lesson is if we go into the Details tab, we have this option for Shadow Caster. Now what this will allow us to do is create a light source inside of Cinema 4D that is able to cast shadows, but it doesn't cast any additional light into the scene. So this could be really, really handy if you have your uh, scene all nice and lit up, and maybe you want to get just a little bit of extra shadowing in a certain area, but you don't want to ruin the lighting that you already have. You can drop in a light source, and we can do this with any light. Enable its shadows from here, whichever shadow type you want to choose, and then back in the details, enable shadow caster. So watch what happens if I turn that on. Now you can see we have the illumination still coming from this light, or in my case, we actually are discarding the illumination from the light and leaving the shadows behind. Now in my case, you can see I'm getting these really, really odd red shadows. And the reason for that is because my light color is set to blue. So my shadows are going to be the inverse of whatever my light color is. So if you create an object and you want it to be a shadow caster, then you want to leave its light color set to white. So I'll set that back to white, which the inverse of white will give us these nice black shadows. So really a nice thing to have, the fact that we can uh, create a light source inside of Cinema 4D that is able to cast shadows wherever we want, but it doesn't affect the overall illumination if we don't want it to. Okay, so that's a look at the different types of shadows that we can utilize inside of Cinema 4D. 